Hey everyone, welcome back from my November Fragrance Awards video. I'm gonna jump right in, starting with my favorite blind buy fragrance that I wore in November. Doesn't mean I purchased it in November, but I wore it then. And I have to give it to Mystique Shimmer from Michael Kors. Love the bottle on this. There are four in this shimmer series. I have them all, and this is one of the prettiest. It's a warm and spicy fragrance for the most part. You get amber, some musk, there's a saffron note that comes out. Even though it is considered warm and spicy, I to me this comes across a little bit dry. If you have smelled Santal Blush from Tom Ford, it's a little bit like that, yet with a more creaminess um, and something a little bit warmer. Like if you were able to warm that one up, you might get something like this. Uh, it's just lovely for sweater weather, any kind of occasion really. I would wear this to the office. I would, I don't go to offices, I work from home. But if I did still work in an office, I would feel comfortable wearing this there. Really non-offensive, uh, one that my husband and family enjoyed on me in general. Mystique Shimmer. The next categories are my favorite bottle and my least favorite bottle. So in last month's uh, Fragrance Awards, I featured Barouge or Barouge Gravity, which is one of my favorite fragrances, really sexy, wonderful fragrance. I wore its cousin or sister, uh, Barouge Lamasat Oud, which has oud as the top it has gayak wood as the middle and then there's a musky base so this one leans more masculine lama sat oud but it's still i think really beautiful so there are five in this series uh gravity lama sat oud in this like bronzy uh brownish bottle there is perlador i think it's a gold bottle and then gray a gray bottle called spiritus and a new one, I don't know if it's new or we're just discovering it, but a purple one called Modernity. I have them all, they're all beautiful. Gravity and Modernity are more uh, feminine. Lama Sat Oud and Perlador maybe are in the middle and then Spiritus, the gray one or silver one, if it's silver or gray, whatever, is uh, much more masculine. So anyway, this bottle is just gorgeous. I said in my October video that this one could have won best bottle for October, but I'm going to go on and give it to Lama Sat Oud from Barouge. And then my worst bottle, but not worst scent, only bottle design is Michael Kors. I've loved this fragrance uh, pretty much since it came out. I think it was in 2001, if I'm not mistaken. This was a little strong when it first came out, but that might've been because of my age at the time. I have been wearing this for the better part of 20 plus years uh, and have an original formulation and then the reformulation, which has the cores on it. The original formulations only say the word Michael on the front, just so you know, in case you're interested. Gorgeous, heavily floral, tuberose, uh, gardenia type of fragrance, very feminine, powerful, and I hate the bottle. Well, I don't hate it. That's a little extreme, Veronica, a little extreme, but it could be better. It doesn't tell you anything about the fragrance inside. It looks like a really stark building, <laughs> just a plain, you know, a plain old building. Ooh, we can see me. Hi, Veronica. Anyway, one of my favorite fragrances, wish the bottle design was better. The next category is the sexiest fragrance that I wore in November. There are a lot of contenders for this category, but I am going to go with Atara by Michael Malul London. I really do like this bottle. It's cute. It's a little bit like kitschy maybe. The fragrance itself is heavily fruity and sweet. It has some vanilla in it. I think there's pear at the top or somewhere in it and maybe a current note. Uh, I will say that when this first opens up, I actually get grapefruit. It's not listed as a note, but that is what I get from it, like a tart grapefruit. No, not tart, Veronica, a sweet grapefruit. <laughs> How grapefruit smells once you and tastes once you've sprinkled some sugar in it. Like imagine the smell and the taste of that combined is what I get from this when it first opened. That dissipates quickly and you're left with this really, really uh, strong, concentrated, 
fruity, sweet fragrance with vanilla and I think there's praline uh, and some tonka bean in here as well. It's sweet and it's gorgeous. It reminds me a lot of La Nuit uh, Tresor, maybe like A La Folie meets something, some other fragrance that has a citrus note in it. If you mix those together, you might get something like this. This was very long lasting, by the way, and a crowd pleaser here in this very picky household. This is a winner, Atara. The next category is my best everyday fragrance from November, a fragrance that you can wear all day, every day for any occasion, hanging around the house, running groceries. You don't run groceries, you run and do groceries or you run errands, those things, hanging out in your sweater and jeans, uh, hanging out with your friends. The fragrance that I'm referring to is E-O-01 Woo. <laughs> by Beale This Parfum Constorca. Uh -huh. This is a fragrance that is wonderful for the fall. It's got so many notes in it. Don't wanna read them all to you, but there are kitchen spice notes in it. Like there's cinnamon, there's nutmeg, there's vanilla. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like a very dulled down pumpkin pie spice kind of flavor with something baking in the oven. Um, like imagine bread baking in the oven and you've got spices in it. That's what this reminds me of. It's a little bit woody and it's soft. That's why I call this an everyday fragrance. This is not a powerhouse that's gonna knock folks out. This is really close to the skin, very pleasant, very fall-like. In the next category, we're talking about a fragrance that will make a great gift, best gift. I usually reserve this category for like the most universally likable scent of the month. I didn't really have one like that this month, so I take, I'm taking a chance on this, and I'm going with one that I cannot pronounce. I'm sorry, I think it is Miroc or Mirage or Mirage or something like that. <laughs> Help me, who knows how to say this, by Tiziana Terenzi. I really like that it comes in this gorgeous gold bottle, which in and of itself is a fantastic presentation for someone. This has to be for someone that does enjoy fragrance and is willing to be a little bit daring because it is a daring fragrance. There is a lot going on in this and it's hard to describe. I'm still getting to know it myself what i can tell you is that it covers a lot of ground in terms of categories it's sophisticated it's elegant it's sexy it's grown up um it has a lot of rose you get that for sure there is oud in here as well which is very soft there's saffron there's some sandalwood and vanilla so it's this at the same time that it's oudy and rosy it's also sweet and a little bit woody too there's a patchouli note in here also. Um, yeah, I think this would make a really beautiful, elegant gift for the fragrance lover. However you pronounce this, this one. Next is the fragrance that is best for the season. So here we are, late November. This is actually my scent of the day today. This is like the amped up version of that E-01 by Beale. <laughs> it's 720 by Maison Sibarit. This fragrance also gives me that kitchen spice with something baking kind of vibe, yet amped up. It also has a lavender note, which I think makes this a little bit more complex even than the E-01 uh, fragrance. And it has patchouli and tonka bean in the base. So it's a little bit stronger, more amped up. Like imagine if that one was almost like a really light, EDT or body spray concentration. This might be like the x straight version of that. Um, I do like these bottles. I don't know that I liked it at first, but I think I'm digging it. And this is a fragrance that is based in water, which makes it unique. If you're interested in learning more about the technology behind this, I would encourage you to go check it out. But really a, a quintessential fall fragrance with those baking spices, that cardamom, that nutmeg, and cinnamon in here. Next we come to the special occasion fragrance. So I have a tie here, mostly because I have to fit these in somewhere and I wanted to talk about both of these and they really are gorgeous for special occasions. One is Bronze Tonka from Carolina Herrera. Look, oh. those of you that are into powerhouse fragrances, 
you get coffee and oud and saffron and sandalwood in here. All I can tell you is that I spray this on. A few sprays goes a long way with this, but it is strong and it's powerful. It comes across very resinous to me, like almost like a concentrated syrupy kind of smell, really strong. As it dries down, the leather and the coffee come out more in this um, and it is beautiful, but you need to like super strong fragrances or this is gonna just like overpower you and you're gonna hate the experience. The one tied with Bronze Tonka is, we know this one, Tom Ford Noir Parfum. Beautiful fragrance. It has citrus at the top with ginger. So it opens kind of fresh and spicy and it starts to settle down into something really sweet and ambery and vanilla, a little gourmand with edge. It's like a night gourmand, if that makes sense. Absolutely gorgeous, um, it has sandalwood in the base and is a really like wonderful evening special occasion kind of fragrance. Definitely a crowd pleaser. On to the fragrance that is the biggest surprise, and maybe this could have been my favorite blind buy for the month. It's Casablanca from Swiss Arabian. We've heard this one talked about over and over again, all over YouTube. So I hesitated to purchase this. I had the entire like Swiss Arabian sampler pack. Not the entire, but it's a huge pack with like 30 something samples. And I remember trying this and going, it's okay, I don't understand what the big deal is. It seemed a little blah to me. But then I took the plunge and purchased it because of why? FOMO, we know about this. <laughs> and uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. So this really is a lot more than I gave it credit for when I sampled it. There's something so different about having the bottle in hand and actually spraying yourself for the day versus a little sample on the back of your hand or something. Sometimes that gets it, but not always. You don't really get to know the fragrance. I have to say this was super delightful for the day and it lasted a long time. I thought it wouldn't last long. I get out of this mostly like apples and spices, but a boozy apple, like a brandy apple kind of scent that um, if you think about it, like apples that have fermented, and if you use that then to make a liquor, that's what this smells like to me. I find it very boozy and um, woody and a little musky. And I think it's pretty. Is it a love love? No, but it's a really strong like. I'm a little parched. And one that I look forward to wearing again soon. So yay, yay, jazz hands for Casablanca. One that isn't a safe blind buy. People may disagree with me, but I'm standing my ground on this one. And it's one that I like, but it is By the Fireplace by Maison Margiela. Here's why. If you're not very adventurous with your fragrances, this is gonna smell bizarre and maybe even sort of stinky when you first put it on because you get this very distinct, like smoky firewood camp, side kind of smell that is a little bit too much with this very very strong i don't know it's like um it's like burnt syrup kind of smell burnt wood burnt syrup yeah that does dissipate and it does calm down as a composition after a while and then you get the nutty accord which is chestnut in here obviously it's woody and it's also very vanillic in the dry down i like this a lot but i think it's challenging especially i would say for the first maybe 30 minutes to like an hour until it really mellows out a lot but this is a really popular fragrance and i bring that up for people that are considering this uh, and not sure what they're getting themselves into just know that if you're not very adventurous the opening of this can be off-putting we move on then to the top fragrances of the month. The... <laughs> we move on then to the top fragrances of November, the ones that I love the most and would advise people to really look into. The first one is controversial. This could have been maybe not a safe blind buy as well. In fact, it really isn't a safe blind buy. Is there a safe blind buy? Mancera Instant Crush. Uh, people have likened this to BR540. Yeah, there are some similarities. 
mostly because there's a really strong sweetness at the top with this heavy, heavy saffron. Now, saffron's a funny note. It's one that could smell like body odor <laughs> to some people, like maybe a little armpit-ish and body funk-like uh, to some folks. I happen to like it. To me, it smells spicy. Oh my God, I just got my red lipstick all over the bottle. Nasty. Nasty girl. This is a hard one to describe because it, it does have that BR540 vibe and that it's like elusive, right? As a fragrance and difficult to describe. I get like this cotton candy, wispy, sugary thing at the top with the saffron. It comes across to me almost leathery. Like this and Spirito Fiorentino from Tiziana Terenzi have some similarities at the top that way. This has also patchouli. You get a little bit of patchouli in here. The vanilla as it dries down, some sweetness. There's even oak moss. There's a lot going on in here. It's pretty complicated uh, and a fragrance that can get really overwhelming if you're not careful with your sprays. I am a heavy sprayer. I do, I don't know, five to eight sprays of this. And that's a little bit for me because I'm one of those that douses myself completely. But I think this is a gorgeous fragrance. And with Mancera, you get a lot of value for your money in these huge bottles and they're pretty long lasting. The second of three in my favorites of the month is Ambra Sultan by Serge Loutons. This is a very heavily resinous, ambery fragrance with some incense in there. You get some kitchen spices like coriander. Ooh, there's no incense. Looking at the notes, it's myrrh, which comes across as incense to me, but oregano, patchouli, um, there's vanilla in here. I, listen, lean in, huddle. You know how you go to do your laundry and you pull out an article of clothing and you're like, Oh my gosh, what was I wearing that day? It was this one, it was this one. I had on this big chunky sweater and this hung on to that sweater and hung on and it was beautiful even two weeks later. Yeah, it took me two weeks to wash that sweater. It was there and it was gorgeous. Whew. Yeah, winner. And then finally in the top three and then we have two more quick categories. Angel Share. I mean, what else is there to say about this beautiful fragrance? It, everyone loves this in my house. This is one of the most like boozy, cinnamon-y, kitchen spice-y, baked apple pie-ish fragrances. Um, just, I love this. How do I love this? Let me not count the ways, but just tell you that it's pretty darn awesome. This is like one of those lifer fragrances for me. Everyone I came across loved this. I went out that day shopping uh, with one of the kids and every store I went into, someone asked me about this fragrance. That was one place. One place someone asked me about it. This next category I used to call my bottom three. I'm gonna just change that to my average three, my meh three. <laughs> maybe not meh, maybe just average and I only have one in this category for this month, and it's a nice one. It is from Alexandria Fragrances, and it is Forbidden Plum, which is a dupe for Tom Ford's uh, Plum Japonaise, I think is how you say that, fragrance, which I have been trying to get my hands on for a reasonable price for a very long time, and I can't find it. So I have this, which is a very close dupe, it says it's warm, spicy, sweet, and oody. And this is a huge performer. Okay, this lasts and lasts and lasts way past 12 hours. I mean, it just goes and goes and goes. The reason that this is sitting in the average category is because I had heard so much about plum Japanese that I was expecting something that would completely take me away. Now, is this a beautiful fragrance? It is. However, it smells like a lot of other fragrances that I have, like Bronze Tonka, like a little bit like Gold Incense Sweetened Up from Carolina Herrera, um, a little bit like Amber Sultan. It's got similarities to those very ambery fragrances. Also, Ambre de Alexandra by uh, Boucheron, same kind of deal. I was expecting something more unique. 
that said, this is lovely. This is a great uh, fragrance, but yeah, the originality factor is low. So yeah. And then in my chopping block category, it's clear to me that these are going to have to leave the house or they're not even like maybes. They got to go. So let's talk first about Cora's Saffron Oris, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's saffron, right? So you get that sort of spicy kitchen thing going on with something very powdery, the Oris. This is a delightful fragrance. It doesn't perform well. It's very light and faint, great sort of t-shirt fragrance. If someone were into those notes, sure, go ahead and get this. For me, it's not interesting enough to keep around um, and it doesn't perform well enough to keep around. So it just doesn't capture my attention. So this has got to go. And then, oh my gosh, y'all, we had the fragrance debacle of the year <laughs> with this next one. Let me just say that my husband and I were off for a specific day. We decided to do some home improvements on said day. We were hanging shelves in his office. Mama came downstairs. I'm mama in the story, by the way came downstairs, I had oversprayed this, by that I mean probably six good pumps. I walked into the office and he was completely disgusted. <laughs> One of those, what, what is that? He joked around that he was walking around in the kitchen trying to avoid it in the air, like just dodging the vapors through the kitchen even after I had left. He said this fragrance was repulsive. He said it pierced his heart. It was so awful. So, my heart was not broken because I was not attached to this fragrance, but I was mortified because apparently I stunk up the entire first floor of our house with this and he could not get away from it. <laughs> and we had to work together to hang up these shelves. Y'all, it is Satin Midnight from Dua, which is a dupe for Oud Satin Mood. Yeah, I was expecting that he would love this. So I doused myself and boy was I wrong. He could not get away from this fast enough. All day long, I had to hear about how horrible this was and how he wanted me to burn it. Not even sell it or give it away, <laughs> just burn it. And I have tried Oud Satin Mood from MFK and this smells a lot like it. Satin Midnight, you got to go. That is my November show. I hope that you enjoyed. Would love to hear your thoughts about these fragrances and I will see you in the next one.